Consulting Engineer South Africa delivered a presidential message earlier today with the key question being whether President Jacob Zuma is to blame for corruption in South Africa. As part of the presentation, they emphasized how much corruption is paralyzing the country and hindering its progress. We're joined in studio now by Niren Bojaram. He's a president at the Consulting Engineers South Africa. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, Niren, this afternoon. Thank you very much. Let's get straight into it. Uh, Lindsay asked at the top of the show, I mean, this is a bit of a simplistic question. Is President Jacob Zuma to blame for corruption in South Africa? But of course, there's the headline to your your overall theme that your yeah. or message you're wanting to put out there. Yeah. Absolutely. The overall theme in if in terms of the message that we we, we uh, tried to put out this morning was uh, the whole question about sustainability and sustainability being fundamentally everyone's business. In the context of sustainability um, in the built environment uh, arena, we spoke about uh, issues such as uh, uh, education, we spoke about issues such as the availability of gov uh, uh, capability of government to spend their budgets, um, but we also then dwelled heavily on the whole business of corruption and um, and how our leaders are appointed in the in in, in this in this country, um, and the strong message that we wanted to give was that um, leaders, both in business and uh, the political arena, will need to be appointed on their basis of their ethical balance, mm -hmm. um, and that becomes more important for sustainability going forward. And when you look at uh, a continent like Africa, which for so long has been the, uh, the subject of much uh, pessimism, Afro-pessimism is something that is now being pushed aside, and economic growth and prosperity, alleviation of, of, of disease and, and poverty is, is of paramount importance. And when you hear sustainability, people say, well, you know, sustainability is all very nice and all very cosy, but that's for the future. Let's just get going first. Is that the sort of attitude you sometimes get? Well, absolutely. I think that uh, you know, if you look at the world definition of, of, of sustainability, it revolves around development and development in such a way that what we do now also is, uh, is good for the uh, future generations. However, in a South African context or an African context or even a developing world context, sustainability might mean having a roof over your head. And that's important. Uh, it's having food on the table. But we are specifically focusing our attention, and it builds from the theme that Consulting Engineers South Africa had last year in terms of declaring that Caesar engineers are unquestionably ethical. We're now going on to say that should leaders be appointed on the basis of their uh, IQ, their EQ, their, their, their physical quotient, or should we be adding this, this, this agenda of, of ethical balance? And we're saying that is a must towards overall sustainability. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that is key for us going forward. Uh, of course, job creation is important in South Africa. Uh, 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 delivering basic services to people is important in South Africa. But there's a basic flaw in what we're doing. And, and that is the, the whole issue of, uh, of uh, having wrong leaders trying mm -hmm. to take decisions which have far and wide uh, uh, N implications. Niren, it's one thing putting the ideals on the table and ideals that we're all too aware of. I mean, yeah. how do you enforce this moving forward? Because these are real issues relating to overall uh, business integrity as well. How do you tackle this problem head on so that you're solving the problem we're sitting with? I think it's a very good question. And what we as Caesar have said is that we've now started building our war chest. So we've asked our members to make an extra contribution towards their membership fees. Caesar is a voluntary association. It has about 500 members representing about 21,000 employees, and that's 90% of the consulting engineering uh, industry in, in South Africa. And we're saying to them, let's build this war chest. And if we find irregularities in, in tender processes and where our members feel aggrieved in terms of how tenders are being awarded, and we have legitimate cases, we will bring those cases to court, and that is the action that we are taking. So we're very firm on that, that we are not going to be, sit back and uh, be treated as, as, as sitting ducks in this whole process. Naren, that's very laudable, and um, I must admit your report is very interesting, and uh, to keep up the good work, you, you put in uh, section five of this report, key sustainability indicators for South Africa. 
And number one is education. Number two, economic and political certainty. Number three, job creation. After that, it goes eradication of corruption, uh, responsible development, etc. Are they ranked in order of importance in your eyes, or are they just written down there? I mean, number one, for example, uh, education, and yet your headline is about corruption. Which is first in your book? Yeah. Uh, that is very much a priority order. So if you have a look at specifically the South African context uh, and uh, the uh, reports that have appeared in the press in the last year about basic education, that is maths and science literacy, um, the statistics for South Africa are quite horrific, uh, where we have teachers who have never done mathematics in school themselves are now teaching uh, kids' mathematics in school. So we're saying that basic education has got to be addressed and addressed properly. Um, that is a basic building block that we see permeating its way through high school. We see it going through universities. And then we're finding that the graduates that are coming out of university in the engineering uh, business has deteriorated over the years. In fact, we have graduates that are less competent uh, today than in the past. And that is of great concern to us mm -hmm. because we are in competition with the international community and the international community is producing engineering graduates at a high rate, first of all, far higher than South Africa is producing it. But they're also producing very competent individuals. Yeah, and of course, uh, now we're seeing these graduates uh, filtering through to the workplace. Uh, just, you know, as an aside, should we be teaching a course on ethical behavior to deal with the corruption issue in South Africa to deal with the eradication of corruption in South Africa? I think the question that I ask, and of course it is a simplistic question, is President Jacob Zuma responsible for corruption in, uh, in South Africa? And the answer clearly has got to be no. But what Jacob Zuma and the government has to do is that they have got to create a platform, and whether it's the legislative framework and the social framework, so that business could thrive in a fair and transparent way. That's their job. They also have got to set an example to society in terms of what uh, business integrity means. So example setting is important. But with corruption, it takes two to tango. So we are not saying that government is to blame for corruption. We are not saying that municipalities are to be blamed. Because there's a corrupter and a corruptee. And we're saying to our members, and we're saying to business at large, that we also need to examine our ethical balance. Someone is paying the bribes, and we need to deal with it. Caesar has taken the bold step last year of making the business integrity management system compulsory as a, as a, as a condition of membership. And we are taking strong action if we find any of our members wanting where uh, business mm -hmm. integrity is concerned. Naren, you, you say, you've told us what you're doing, what CESA is doing, and, but you also have a paragraph that says, what can you do? And okay, you talk about President Zuma, the most important man in, in, in the country, and it must start with him. But on the other hand, it also must be bottom up, if you like. I mean, it, it starts with you and me and, and, and Alicia, and it starts with the person that you know, throws his Coke can out of, his, out of his car. I mean, it's a very simplistic sort of uh, example, but it, it's a, a civilized society we're trying to, to build here. So everyone involved. Exactly, and that is the very theme of our, 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 our address to the media this morning. What we were saying very specifically is that sustainability is everyone's business. That we all have to have a moral conscious towards sustainability and business integrity and corruption is just but one element of sustainability in the broader sense. So it is everyone's responsibility.